Warning, this podcast contains violence, sexuality, gore, and other horrible and disturbing things. Listener discretion is advised. Also, the hosts of this venture are ignorant dipshits, so please do not take anything they say as fact. And enjoy the show. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good, then we'll begin. Today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. It is our basic human right to be forgot. A second plane now has crashed into the other tower of the World Trade Center. But get it in the water that turned the friggin' frogs gay! The defendant shall be incarcerated for the rest of her natural life with no possibility of parole. You are not machines! You are not cattle! You are men! We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. 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 Last episode, Richard went over some of the philosophy and uh, design ideas for signage and the thoughts behind what we need to do to warn the people 10,000 years in the future about nuclear waste. This episode, we're going to talk a bit more about that and about the structure itself. Just how are we going to build this vault that should be forgotten? About 100 miles outside Las Vegas, deep in this remote patch of desert, there's a $19 billion hole in the ground. That's how much it has cost to fight over and build this five-mile test tunnel under Yucca Mountain. Now largely abandoned for almost a decade, it was designed to be the answer to America's nuclear waste, a problem still piling up at faraway places like this. And we're entering the area now that's between the two units. San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant, midway between Los Angeles and San Diego, where engineers produced power for half a century. This is spent fuel from the Unit 2 reactor. Ron Pontes helps manage the decommissioning of San Onofre, which shut down in 2012. How many years worth of spent fuel are we looking at here? About 50 years worth of, uh, of operation here. Under this massive concrete slab, 536 tons of radioactive spent nuclear fuel from the plant is temporarily buried. The fact that Yucca Mountain had failed to materialize as the, uh, as the nation's repository for spent nuclear fuel has stranded fuel not only at this site, but at sites across the nation. Congress designated Yucca Mountain as the location for a national permanent nuclear waste repository back in 1987. A test tunnel was dug but never licensed. It is an isolated location which has the right geology which can make the difference for safe use of nuclear power and storage of nuclear waste for generations and generations to come. Wyoming Senator John Barrasso is now pushing legislation that would restart the licensing of Yucca Mountain, a process the Obama administration put on hold almost a decade ago after opposition from a bipartisan group of Nevada politicians. I have concerns about the science here. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto of Nevada has been fighting Yucca Mountain for over 20 years. Part of the infrastructure that is necessary is to build all, build all of the rail lines that need to come across Nevada, across this country to bring it there. And a lot of those rail lines and the shipment would come right through the heart of Las Vegas. This will be a bottleneck for all of this radioactive waste if, in fact, Yucca Mountain does go through. It's a bottleneck. Two shipments a day for 50 years. What it, I mean, it's crazy. Cortez Masto invited us along on a rare visit to the tunnel, hosted by William Boyle from the Department of Energy. And how good of a site is this for the country's nuclear waste? Well, the department felt it was good enough that we submitted the license application in 2008. Do you agree with that submission? It wouldn't have been submitted if I didn't agree. What are you thinking? I disagree. Sure. Cortez Masto says some scientists worry that the water on the ground will mix with nuclear waste and enter the drinking supply of small nearby farming communities. Boyle feels that risk is safely manageable. Do you say what's unfolding here is political science? What do you mean by that? Because when they passed the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, we didn't have any seniority at the time in the state of Nevada to be able to change that. And so literally, it got crammed down Nevada's throat. 
At what point does time just run out in the debate and it becomes just such an issue with the, uh, all this waste collecting and we just say we have to put them somewhere? It's my impression that if we were to ask the people that live at, near San Onofre, near San Diego, that they reached that point a while ago. It, it, it's, it, I mean, it's true. Like people will look for human traits in, in anything, uh, you know, flashback to our furry episode. Um, yeah. You know, they, they see animal, these are animals. They are not human, but people see human traits in them and, and model, you know, kind of like a hybrid see human traits in fucking skyscrapers, let alone animals. People pack bond <laughs> with Roomba vacuum cleaners. Like, <laughs> and, and I mean, I guess it's true. I've told google things you know like my my google speaker you know you'll say hey google i love you and then it'll respond oh steal and someone's cell phone their paternal instincts will click right in yeah in the mortal in the immortal words of dr cox from scrubs if i give this pencil a name and snap it a part of you will die inside <laughs> yes, precisely <laughs> That's such a so good line. we're always naturally looking for human traits and things um and and so Communication by facial expression is is a very good and very powerful tool uh, to communicate danger, uh, you know, of this of, of this area. I mean, part of the issue though is you like you'll see that, but like, you know, if you went to the, one of these sites, you know, the the context may not be there, but what these faces are communicating um, will not be lost. Um, you know, it's kind of like when you walk into like a, like a cave and you see the caveman drawings, you see men, women, children, antelope, you know, you, you understand why these drawings are and what they are, but you don't like know why did that caveman draw that on that wall? Yeah. But, but you know what, what it is, you know? And, and so that's what makes that, a very useful way to communicate. Um, everything about the site needs to reinforce every other message about that site because the area itself is supposed to be a message. There needs to be like redundant posting. So you're not going to put one sign up. You're going to put signs all over the fucking place. Um, you know, it's got to be something that has never been experienced before as well. Like it, it's got to be that fundamentally different that, you know, anybody who arrives at the site will know that great human effort was put into constructing this area. It was a massive undertaking and it's very fucking important. You know, again, you, you don't know why, but you know it is. You have the scenario of the hidden treasure. You have the idea that something is there and it is valuable and uh, you people would start to dig for it. You could even have the uh, scenario where people even know it is dangerous, uh, and, but it's also valuable at the same time. Could the waste also, in the future, have the value of gold or even more? Well, just to, to, to answer the question honestly, yes. Yes, it could. What is unpredictable, of course, is uh, human behavior. That who knows why people might come and drill a hole? There must be a reason for someone to start to dig down to 500 meters in a just average ordinary rock. But what could prevent them from doing it? I wouldn't know. But could this reason be that, that the knowledge about what's there is incomplete? Of course it could, yes. Yeah. What if there was a sign that said, don't drill here? Well, that might be a case for, uh, uh, let's say, for a certain period of time at least. What, what do you mean? Well, if you put a marker, they are called markers. So this is, an, this is a concept or a thought that exists. It's an idea which has been thought over that an area where a disposal has been made could be marked using markers. The obvious uh, marker is an object with text on, just like a rune stone. This is, I think, is a typical marker where you see that you have messages repeated in different United Nations languages, general information about the area, and you have more detailed information also. And that, in, in turn, uh, is part of a whole marker system where you had, you might have uh, more uh, detailed information yet if you went to another place in that same site. 
there would be a message kiosk, for instance. It is a more detailed message than the one on the monolith. And then you could go, go further on and have messages uh, like a small library in carved rock, perhaps an underground. What would be the, the, the content of the information? To uh, say that uh, this is not a, an important place, it is a place of danger and stay away from the site and not disturbing the site. These were the main uh, messages. This is where the cartoon comes in, where you have uh, a low sophistication, but you have a, a robust message. This is a attempt to give you a feeling rather than give you a detailed message Intuitively, you would expect people to react to something frightening better than to a detailed uh, message. Forbidding blocks, a landscape of thorn, landscapes that uh, would get you to feel that this is something which is wrong, this is something not inviting. Did it make you hesitate? or maybe curious. What drove you to enter? Was it the scars we left on the surface or a rumor? In the terms of emotional information, uh, there was an interest in the uh, a picture of Edward Munch, the scream, uh, to uh, portray something that was negative. It uh, shows uh, the feeling of despair, and uh, it's very clear to the observer that uh, this is not uh, something good. Uh, but do you think this will be clear at all ages, at all times? I think uh, it has a fair chance, uh, yes, I do. It's universal? I think it is universal for humans. Is it very sick? So it must be known that these markers themselves comprise a much larger message about the site and are an enormous warning message. So like you encounter a bunch of massive structures that you can climb onto the top of, you know, you climb up to the edge of one and you can like look at the whole site and you look around and there are massive other structures for a great distance for as far as you can see. You know, you, you would see this as a message, you know, there, there's something here and you don't want to suggest, though, anything about shelter or agriculture. You know, any sort of barrier would be a symbolic barrier since you would be able to, like, climb the wall or you could bury under it, which you probably don't want people doing. You know, it's got, it's got to be something more to it. <clears throat> Until you get force field, most barriers when unattended are symbolic. Yes, precisely. When you um, say, like, doesn't attract agriculture, does that imply, like, salt the earth, make sure th things don't grow or what? Yeah, pretty much. Anything that says you don't want to live here, you don't want to farm here, just don't mine here, just fuck right off is basically what you wanted to say. What exactly would this look like? So there's a couple of different proposals. Uh, there's the landscape of thorns. So you're traveling through the woods and you encounter a clearing. And in this clearing are massive structures protruding from the ground. These structures are just giant spikes. And out of these giant spikes coming out of them again are even more spikes. And then even more spikes coming out of those spikes. Now, that's a very unwelcoming sight to imagine. A bunch of open, big open field with a bunch of massive spikes coming out of it, shooting spikes out of themselves. It's unwelcoming. It's ominous. It looks a little bit like rose bushes. You know, if you hurt, if you touch one of the spikes, it'll hurt you because they're sharp and they're spiky. Um, you know, they're pointing out in various directions, all irregular, not repetitive, you know, just very randomly looking spikes in direction and location. They're not controlled, you know, and very chaotic. It was getting like closer and closer to like baby proofing a house. Yeah. Too many RPGs because I like. I know the good loot is in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> they put all the work into landscape design. I bet there's a treasure chest with an upgraded new weapon or like some kind of big beast boss in there. You Yo, know? There's, yeah, there's a fucking mid boss in there. I it's gotta the slap down with this rocket. <laughs> 
know, you walk in, there's a bunch of ammo season. sitting at the base of the, of the <laughs> you know, you walk through the bush and it's like, potion. Yeah. checkpoint reached and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the area they put right at level one where if you go into, you get your ass kicked so that later on you'd be like, okay, I got to come back when I'm leveled up and take that on again. <laughs> You know, the, the plutonium area, that's the high level end game segment of this wasteland. <laughs> just like in he- Fallout, you just lose more and more your health. <laughs> you gotta get some rad resist before you <laughs> try to get that railgun. Fuck yeah. The uh, kind of building on that I- idea, another one was uh, the spike field. So there again, <laughs> you know, spikes coming out at different angles, but they're not like thorns. It's just a bunch of spikes. Um, Sequel you know, to Seinfeld, the spikes field. <laughs> spike field. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> but uh, basically, all these spikes protruding from the ground at various different angles, you know, again, renders it unsuitable for like taking shelter, uh, renders it unsuitable for farming. Cause you got to deal with all these fucking spikes everywhere. Um, the other thing is, is that they would have like walls kind of enclosing the spikes. Uh, so again, that would, you know, leave you with a very unwelcoming sense of this uh, place. Look, Jerry, it's plutonium. We're going to move. <laughs> we're going to move from this side of town to the other. They got the spikes. I park the cars. It's foolproof, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. hits in a weird way close to home because in uh, in the the Navajo Nation, which which encounters what uh, in the U.S. is known as the Four Corners, where there's four states that all line up, and us and Colorado and Utah and New Mexico, and it all the Four Corners happen to be almost smack dab in the middle of the Navajo Nation. And if you drive through the Navajo Nation, which is also close to the Hopi Reservation and others. Uh, wow, they are trying hardcore to convince local native populations that they should allow them to mine uranium. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. if you're a, like a long-sighted person and you know the history of, of the, na- the exploitation of the native population, it's like, no, don't. Don't sell any of your lands to plutonium mining because you'll never get it back. It'll become the thing that we're talking about right now because as much as this is an interesting topic for the future, talking about people's right now conditions of that, it just becomes a more and more complicated issue. It, I'm, ass, I'm assuming that same kind of thing is happening in Saskatchewan if they're trying to pull this material out of the world, right? Except that all of our uranium is from super far up north where fewer people live. Yeah, that's the idea around here also. When you drive onto the Navajo Nation, it's considered by the general U.S. government as like nearly, quote, uninhabited so we don't feel bad about it let's just fuck up the whole thing like right you know what i'm talking about mm-hmm. oh up north saskatchewan who cares let's just make it an irradiated hell for the oh people do live up there but we just don't care like that kind of sentiment not enough people for us to officially give a shit yeah there's a town of 300 people like oh yeah drop in the bucket like who cares about them like, it's like what if they grow up with five eyes maybe we should care <laughs> Do you want to know what one of the most northern pro- or, uh, cities in our province is? Sure. It's called Uranium City. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, why, why not? On the lonely shores of Lake Athabasca in the northwest corner of Saskatchewan, every summer is open season for uranium hunters. As weapons, the serious prospector nowadays needs more than hammer or Geiger counter. Diamond drilling at $6 a foot is routine. These sourdough scientists go over their chosen ground with great care. Experts estimate the chances of a big uranium find at about one in a thousand. But the stakes are high. One of the richest strikes was made not far away at Gunner. It will take four years at Gunner to exploit only what lies on the surface. And geologists believe there is plenty more underneath. To extract uranium from the ore at Gunner, a second mill is built in the region. Every piece of equipment, large or small, has to be towed 300 miles by barge during the four months of the year when the lakes are free of ice. The only other way in is by air.
like I, I, it, I this is gonna sound like shtick, but I love, I genuinely love. Like I'm from a middle of nowhere town. I grew up. Uh, there's a town of 800 people, and it has been a town of 800 people for as many years as history has existed has existed in the U.S. So me hanging out in rural Saskatchewan, I would genuinely have a fucking great time. I want to do it. These flesh beings all live in the uh, largest populated city in Saskatchewan, yeah. which is 250,000 people. You don't even have a hockey team. That's fucking hilarious. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, I want to see minor league so bad. I want to see some fucking e- ECHL or whatever. That would be whatever. What are the <laughs> Central Blades? Canadian Hockey League. WHL. The WHL. Blades are the WHL, yeah, the Western Hockey League, West, which Western includes League, right. American teams. I'm trying to check where the Erie Otters are in. They're, we're like a crappy minor league team in Erie, Pennsylvania, but they have like top prospects for the NHL go through them. So, and it's just so much cheaper. <laughs> you can go to a Blades game. Get, 11, get an $11 hot dog. It'll be great. <sighs> Eleven dollar hot dog and twenty five dollar can of beer. Mm-mm. Yeah, but that's an American's, like only five dollars. So, <laughs> precisely, yes. Yeah. More about spikes. Uh, they also have a proposal for a spikes bursting through grid as a warning. So basically, it would be like there would be a grid somehow put on the ground. And then the spikes would be jetting up through sections of this grid and the earth would be kind of configured to make it sort of look like a bit of a hole towards the center of, of where the waste is buried. It's starting to feel like game well, design and less like real yeah. life design. Other ideas are, again, more leaning stone spikes so that kind of anybody digging in the area would find that there would be like these flat bases, like a, a flat... Uh, level of stone that all these spikes are like sitting on. Um, so, you know, as you dig, you know, once you get to this stone, you'll be like, well, you know, again, it's, it's useless. Like, you know, you can't farm here. It's just stone underneath it. You know, I would want a sign that had a picture of an adult human being getting fucked in the ass by a grizzly bear. Because everyone from any generation throughout time is going to know what an adult human looks like and what a grizzly bear is and know that you don't want to get fucked by one. Look, as a member of the might want to get fucked by Bear. nuclear grizzly bears coalition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, Gwai Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> How many wear bears are showing up here? Do they speak new or old English? Are they dapper? Can they speak? Can they hold teacups? It is to be known. <laughs> Can I put them on a little unicycle? Really, really, Oot, that's the requirement for getting butt fucked by grizzly bears if you can hold a teacup. If, if he can hold and drink from a teacup, that sounds that sounds gracefulish. Basically, sentience at that point. Yeah. And now we know why Oot's going to hell. <laughs> In hell, are there nuclear <laughs> grizzly bears? Not nuclear grizzly bears, but there are many grizzly bears. Most of them are actually in their own heaven, which is chewing on people's spleens. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fun. Other ideas recommended uh, were menacing earthworks. So like a, a bunch of lightning bolt structures would be er- erected so that if you like, if you're flying over it, you'll like look down, it'll be like this field, like a square field, but emanating from the sides of the square would be like lightning bolts and, uh, you know, kind of from the center of the burial site. So, you know, you'd climb on top of one of these bolts and you'd see all the other bolts, you know, coming out of the area, you know, so, you know, for example, just kind of building these lightning bolts out of like artificial hills. What you really need is to hook up the old like nuclear fuel to some sort of uh, like steam generating source. Like it's still going to be hot enough that it can generate some electricity and then hook it up to a giant Tesla coil on the surface so that anyone who gets too close to the entrance to the mine gets electrocuted forever. Snap. <laughs> forever. <laughs> Infinite. <laughs> The other idea would be like uh, taking a called the black hole where they take like a big build, just a giant, large concrete slab over the area, dye it black, um, you know, because you can't live there because it's just a fucking concrete slab. You can't farm it because it's a concrete slab. And so any visitor would walk in and they'd see like it's just an area of a black void and nothingness kind of like my life um you know and then of course the sun beating down on it you know in the summertime would also make it a very hot thing to like try to walk on or walk through or work with or do anything with because it's you know dyed black concrete sitting in the hot sun in the summer burning man festival 
But th- there's a there's a problem with the lightning one though. Oh. Like it would attract Spider Man looking for Electro. So as long as we're like willing to sacrifice him, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So this is a real question I'm asking, just so I don't ape a thing in your later conversation. Are you uh, have have you looked into? Are you going to talk about uh, hemp's ability to potentially remedy things? What? Oh, so like if you right now in Chernobyl, like they're planting hemp just around the outsides of it because it just like sucks up all the shittiest part that we hate about uh, like nuclear waste and other nuclear byproducts. It's we call a bioaccumulator. So in another roundabout way. Weed could potentially partly save the world. Interesting. It sucks up the heavy metals and things that make it the most harmful, and then it's just in the plant. Then you get rid of the plant and it's gone. <laughs> also, bees love cannabis. Fucking love it. So oh, many flowers. Yeah. Yeah. We're saving the bees and the plants. Keep puffing, people. You're going to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another idea would be a rubble landscape. So the gist of this is that you'd build like a giant wall uh, and basically fill it up with stone and sand and you know really soft sand so that anybody like who decides to climb up this this monument here um, would find it difficult to walk across because it's just fucking sand. It's like walking through a desert. And if they try to dig in it, you know, it's just more and more sand as they keep right. digging down. So it's, it's, a, there's really no interest in it. Uh, again, materials are cheap. You know, there's no really point in trying to steal the sand out of the out of the encased wall there. You know, you can't do construction because, you know, you can't build buildings on sand because, you know, sure. it would just be very hard to work with. Um, other ideas for bidding blocks is you'd come to this clearing, you'd see a grid of house sized concrete black blocks, not the Portland black block, though. Yeah, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> too bad but uh yeah these blocks would be arranged in a grid uh but yet no care would be given to them so some of them would be kind of askew or whatever uh, corridors wouldn't be evenly spaced there'd be very narrow corridors so you can't live in them you couldn't farm them you know and if you wanted to try to farm the land you'd have to do something with these giant blocks so you're just going to keep walking through you know the corridor would be like three feet wide and go nowhere um, I would like to very quickly interject and invite all our listeners to join our Patreon, patreon.com slash ovipod. Uh, for $6.66, you can join my fan club, and I will send you some really sweet free shit in the mail. Or you can join my fan club, and I will also send you cool free shit in the mail. Yeah, I'm... S- or Oud's fan yeah, club. I was going to say, I'm or sorry Richard's for all you club. plug in your, your little fan clubs there, because I know anyone listening to this would be joining the Richard Bigley fan club, so... Look, the Pepper Coyote Patreon is definitely going to overcome. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Let's come back together in a year's time on April 10th, and whoever has the lowest fan club has to, I don't know, pee their pants on camera. Oh, uh, finally I mean, someone's I'll do paying it. me to pee my pants. It's time. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's on. Join my Patreon. I don't want to pee my pants on camera. Sage does not own paint. Join so. my Patreon. I think my, my bladder's too shy to just pee my pants. I'd have to do it in a corner by myself. <laughs> I feel Go like up. that's better. That's that's better. Oh. I'll pee my pants for five dollars. Who wants to give me five? <laughs> we live in a capital. Like, like, wait, they're paying you to do this. Exactly. I've been peeing my <laughs> pants for free for years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if 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 Leon can't piss his own pants, can everyone else piss his pants for him? Yeah, exactly. We'll piss your pants for you. Yeah, we'll piss Leon's pants for him. You can be on my. I'm not going to pee on Leon's pants. It's like that situation where you're in your jeans and like a I'm water good. What I do the tiniest for living, bit like, at the bottom. I get my pants peed on fairly regularly. Actually, what's most common is leaning up against a piss-soaked bed before I realize it's soaked in piss <laughs> and getting a nice like stripe of piss across my waist. <sighs> Unfortunately, are you what's a, the worst I, version of like the, my belly getting you. wet when I do the dishes? I'm assuming you're a medical professional of some kind. Yeah, I'm a care aide. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, pee bed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the same job, but I definitely sympathize with the situation, I understand. One day I will be an RN, just like my grandma. That's not true. (laughs) It is a novel profession, or it is an honorable profession, though. Boy, you need them forever. Yeah, grandma's making people. Please be a nurse. Grandma, grandpa, grand they, whoever. Be a nurse. We need nurses. Sorry, you won't get paid. But anyway, this is America talking. In Canada, maybe you do get paid. 
not from the nurses I heard. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so you walk into these sites, you ignore the warnings, and you walk in. And what do you find? Well, like all RPGs, you find a map. Posting <laughs> all... Yes. Basically, there's a map and it like lists all the burial sites around the world of all the various nuclear waste. Um, you know, it'll tell and, me where the red resist armor is. Yeah, and so like all uh, maps that are you know of man-made structures, it'll say you are here, pointing to the site that you are currently on. Uh, the map would also include like relative directions to other sites around the world, uh, based on where you are as the center. Um, the conventional world maps, um, you know, for a long term, uh, don't work well, uh, due to continental drift. So like GPS coordinates will change over millennia. So they would have to use a new map on the site as center, um, and use all the other, you know, sites relative to it. Um, basically, uh, the plan is that this revised map or this new map would be accurate within four kilometers over like 10,000 years you know, taking into effect continental drift. Um, a star map would also accompany the sites. Uh, ancient civilizations know about stars and how they move through the sky. Future civilizations likely would understand that as well. So, you know, if you track the North Star for 26,000 years, it'll draw a circle in the sky. So using this, uh, future civilizations will be able to tell how long the site has been there and <laughs> how long the waste has been buried. And we can say, do not open this site until the stars are in this position in the sky, you know, 10,000 years later, because, you know, as the North star does its circle, we would be able to, you know, do all that stuff. You know, one of the suggestions is it'll be like a, a disgusted face, you know, as time goes on. And then as the North star moves through the sky, it's symbolized with like a, you know, a, a less angry face and then a happier face, you know, that kind of thing to say, okay, well now it's on the, the happy face. So now we can like use this site now, you know, the waste is now safe. And then, of course, there would also be a map of the site itself. Um, there would be rooms providing important information embedded in the rock faces. Um, some structures may be designed to, like, whistle or scream or hum as wind blows through them. Um, you know, because, you know, if there's an audio component, you're like, well, that's obviously intended. Um, there may also be, at least for the first few centuries, electronic components that would provide other warnings, you know, powered by a thermoelectric system using the heat from the material under the ground to generate enough power to make a warning system of some type work, you know, for a little while using high-grade electronic components. So whose idea was it to use the waste to power a Tesla? I think that was Filger, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, so he was kind of on ball with that, you know, use some of that waste to, to power, um, you know, other warning systems, beepers and lights and that sort of thing. Let it be known that Filger is fist pumping. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, the periodic table of elements would be displayed prominently on the walls, down arrows, warning to future civilizations of what exists under them. So that big circled U, U on the periodic table with a down arrow will be pretty clear to most people. Um, you'd also see a new symbol, uh, kind of based on the uh, radioactive symbol, you know, those three fan blades, the trefoil. Um, so in addition to a down pointing arrow, uh, they would also add 700 meters under it. So basically at some point in the history of the, uh, international symbol for buried radioactive waste, um, you know, it'd be like, it'd be like a newly accepted symbol. Now you might be like, well, why do they need a new symbol? Well, because they don't want you digging, but it will be okay for you to walk on the surface because it's far enough down that you're safe. Now the problem or why it's a new symbol is because like the trefoil mm -hmm. means that there's radio radiation present in a close vicinity. So if you saw the symbol for radiation and you tested for radiation at the surface, you wouldn't find any. And you'd think, well, okay, it's gone. It's safe. We don't have to follow this, which is why they want to make a new symbol based on that trefoil symbol with the down arrow and 700 meters because they're saying, well, the radiation's not here. It's below you. And so they would understand, you know. That makes sense. So, so that, you know, it's, it's good communication, I think. You know, right? Yeah. 
Uh, there would also be buried rooms in the structure. So like if people started digging, they would find the presence of very buried rooms that would also offer additional information, um, okay. you know, markers and warnings as you dig, um, you know, markers would bear a human face, perhaps frightened or in woe or in physical pain. And, you know, as you go digging down and down and down, your, you know, the facial expressions on, on the various markers you find are going to get, you know, more and more distressed. <laughs> We're just as- making an in. Indiana Jones temple in reverse, aren't we? <laughs> there will be a giant boulder, and when you pick up the plutonium, the giant boulder will follow you through the hallway. Precisely, yes. <laughs> Damn, baby. <laughs> but it just screams like a small child the whole time, which is... <laughs> yeah. Um... Ah! It'll sing Baby Shark the whole time, and it'll make <laughs> generations run away. Nobody wants to use this land. It plays oh! the Baby Shark song. It's a radiated do to do. It's a ray and the run from this site in the year ten thousand. <laughs> That's how you know that the person's been to the forbidden site too, because they're walking along just do it. The heathen has been there. I do not understand the spirit of do to do to do. I do not understand this ancient tongue, but I know it does not vibe. Uh, the other idea is that there would be like access shafts. So it would be as you dig down, uh, there would be like shafts that will also be marked. And there would also be alternating layers of sand and gravel. So, you know, as you go through gravel, then you get to sand and then you get to gravel again. And it's, you know, it's, I guess, again, to note that this is like a, an artificial thing. We built it like this. This isn't how it is in nature. And, it's sort of like know, how we built this city on rock and roll. And yeah, also it's a not really... shaft is just a tattooed dick. Yes. <laughs> a tattooed no dick. Quite seen... pain. My tattooed <laughs> dick just says swan, but when I get an erection, it says Saskatchewan. <laughs> God. <laughs> I want to do have this a, now. Now I have a visual of how wrinkly it is normally. So you got to take a Saskatchewan and just wrinkle it in. That's like a humble brag of how many characters you can hide within your own. It's like a sharp A. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My penis has the entire communist manifesto suddenly tattooed onto it. <laughs> From each according to their ability to each according to their need or whatever, but make it about sex. And well, I'm sure you can figure one out yourself. I just decided not to say it because I am classy like that. <laughs> Since when? Since I decided about <coughs> 10 seconds ago. Okay, okay Mr. Big Dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there would also be like pictorial verbal warnings as you dig, um, you know, written on glass and ceramic and titanium. Uh, there would also uh, be... Uh, radio uh, radiation monitoring materials so like future civilizations can track the emission of radiation on these sites uh there would also be markings of caution um you know against slant or horizontal drilling um you know because you don't want somebody to like start digging in those sites um so they would be resistant to extreme heat as to slow or hinder any future like laser drilling that might develop um and yeah basically just try to hinder any sort of you know construction on the sites and drilling on the sites to stop it from being disturbed there are some efforts put in kind of to stop theft and vandalism on the site but we really don't know what the future would hold for what one of these sites would look like you know wars such as like nuclear war or i guess wars with sticks and stones after the nuclear war uh could destroy the site or render it useless You are now in the tunnel. This place is not a place of honor. No esteemed deeds are commemorated here. You should not have come here. You are heading towards a place where you should never go. What is there is dangerous and repulsive. The danger will still be present in your time as it is in ours. Please turn around and never come back. There is nothing here for you. Go no further.
you have now gone deeper into the tunnel and you have reached a place where you should never have come. Down here radiation is everywhere. You do not know it, but something is happening to your body right now. It is beyond your senses. You feel nothing, you smell nothing. An invisible light is shining right through you. It is the last glow of my civilization that harvested the powers of the universe. My personal belief is that no human intrusion will take place at, at any time scale ever. If someone in the future is able to dig down to the repository, it will probably be a civilization of the same kind as we have presently. And in such a case, they will all also be knowledgeable to know that this is a radioactive material. The design and the construction and implementation has to be done so that, uh, that no knowledge is necessary for the future. So that it can be safe also in that case that people would lost, have lost the knowledge. I would love to, to be able to meet you and, and to try to communicate with you. This is probably the only testimony of our time. You're now entering a repository with spent nu nuclear fuel from the 21st century. It must be stored in a safe place. This place should not be disturbed. Don't go there. It's dangerous. It's radioactive. You can't see it. You can't smell it. Don't touch anything. Go back up to the surface and take better care of our world than we did once. And you will be safe if you stay away from it. Good luck. So the other issue is perhaps one of these sites could actually be weaponized in a conflict. Um, so we don't really know what's going to come of a site like this, you know, over the next 10,000 years. But I don't know. Uh, if this is how we proceed to contain our radioactive wastes, then I guess we'll right, find out as a civilization. So with OV Pod, I'm Richard Bigley. It's very always second. Always second. Okay, and then am I always third? Do I always go? I am Pepper them? Coyote and I love pizza. <laughs> Pepper it's Coyote! Always, it's always hope <laughs> third, Sage second, and then bullshit third. CC's I'm pizza Ood. is an inside job. I am Pepper Coyote. <laughs> OOD. I am also Pepper Coyote. You can't tell yes. me. Yes. We are all Pepper Coyote. I am Pepper Coyote. Hello. Pepper Coyote <laughs> strong. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. Yep. Let's all get matching tattoos right in, our, right in the napes of our neck. It's really about time. I want it just under my left breast if I <laughs> don't have a corporeal form. Just a few millimeters. Just a few. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> night. <laughs> bye. Playing us out this episode, a song that fits the topic of this episode very well. There's another theory, uh, or another idea of how to warn people about nuclear warnings, and that is to breed a special breed of cats that will have fur that changes colors when they encounter radiation. And in the spirit of that song, Emperor X wrote, 10,000-year earworm to discourage settlement near nuclear waste repositories, or its shorter name, don't change color, kitty. Enjoy and see you in the after show. Don't change color, kitty. Keep your color, kitty. Stay that pretty gray. Don't change color, kitty. Keep your color, kitty. Keep sickness away. Don't change color, kitty. Keep your color, kitty. Please, cause if you do, 
to blow your luminous eyes, we're all gonna have to move. So don't change color, kitty, keep your color, kitty, stay that pretty gold. Don't change color, kitty, keep your color, we'll keep you from the cold. So don't change color, kitty, keep your color, cause you need your kind around. The minute you change your looks, we're bringing you with us out of town. So don't change color, kitty, keep your color, kitty, no, I don't know why. Don't change color, kitty, keep your color, kitty, God said it's not right. So don't change color or flash your eyes, cause Lord knows if you do. I hope you think it's cozy in your travel case, because it's time to move. Don't change color, kitty, keep your color, kitty, stay that midnight black. The radiation can be changing wise, can be killing, that's a fact. The radiation, whatever that is, is something we don't want. Cause it withers our crops and it burns our skin and it turns our livestock on. So don't change color, little kitty, don't flash your eyes. So don't change color, little kitty, don't flash your eyes. So don't change color. Hello, and welcome to the After Show. I'm Ood Gallifrey. Hello, occultists, and welcome to the After After Show. My name is Leon Filger. I'm drunk, and I'm high, and I'm about to leave and go to a CPR course, so we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, though, got to tell you about something important. It's the Patreon. It's the shit that keeps the world going round and the show going on. If you hit up patreon.com slash ovpod, you can join our fan clubs for $6.66 a month. You're going to get your episodes a week early. You're going to get exclusive content, neat little care package, and we're all going to have a good time in the end. Uh, see you in the after, after, after show, or next episode. Bye.